What's the word, y'all? Who would have thought that it would be 3-0 in both conferences right now? The Western Conference, I kind of understand. The Denver Nuggets have been the best team out West all season long, and they've been taking care of business in these playoffs. But out East? Out East? I did not expect it to be 3-0 in the favor of the Miami Heat. I'm going to say right off rip, I want to apologize. I, I, I have to make a formal apology to one of the GOATs. Pat Riley. Because every single year we do the NBA trade deadline stream where I'm reacting to the trades as we get closer and closer to the deadline. And the whole time, I'm thinking about two different teams. The first team being the Chicago Bulls. They didn't do anything at the deadline. Of course, I'm going to complain about the Bulls. That's what we do around here. You know what I'm saying? And the second team was the Miami Heat. Because they didn't do anything either. They got Kevin Love on the buyout market. But that was the deadline. And at that point, they were what, like the 8th seed, the 7th seed, or whatever. A team that was one shot away from being in the NBA Finals the previous season. Underachieving. And not just me. A lot of Heat fans that I'm aware of are like, man, what is Pat Riley doing? How, how can he not make no trades right now? He's one of the GOATs, man. Whether it, whether it be coincidental or what. Because there was a rumor that brother was literally sleeping at the deadline. Like literally in the middle of a nap. So it might be coincidental, or he might be from the future. He might have known that he don't need to make no changes because this Heat team is going to play their best basketball when the lights are the brightest. The fact that the, the Boston Celtics are in a game that's practically going to determine whether this series is going to be over quick, and they show no fight. In a game, in a game three where they were down 2-0. Again, history says no team has ever come back from down 3-0. I just got a notification on my phone that that the Boston Celtics somehow are still the favorite to win the series. I don't know what you could have seen for these first three games to make you think that they really have a chance to win four in a row. But if they do, we all experience a history, I guess. I mean, either way, we experience a history. This would be the first Eight seeds to ever make an NBA Finals appearance. They had tied history with the 98-99 New York Knicks. One of those type of years where the Knicks were the eight seed and also made it to the conference finals. Where this team, I just, I can't, I still can't fathom how they got this far, bro. And I don't mean that in no, like, disrespectful way. This this not saying that it's luck or anything like that. But, like, I'm watching these games and I'm seeing lineups. That's Cal Lowry, Kayla Martin, Max Strews. Kevin Love and Cody Zeller and I'm like ain't no way that lineup in 2023 is gonna get the job done it's getting the job done and it's uh it's it's really good they got a lot of players that were like the zombie version of themselves Kyle Lowry was having a terrible season start coming off the bench and now he's giving you another different thing Kevin Love was on the Cleveland Cavaliers struggling they bought him out completely then he got to Miami he didn't know what to do anymore Duncan Robinson got paid $90 million from his bubble run and then was getting DMP coach decision early in the season. And now here we are, 3-0 in the Easter Conference Finals, and all three of those dudes have been crucial in this game alone. Now, I'm not going to look at the final stats because I know in the fourth quarter when the uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, when the Boston Celtics threw in the white towel, uh, Duncan Robinson continued to run it up. Gabe Vincent continued to run it up. But in this game, Duncan, not just in this game, in this series, Duncan Robinson has been walking past his defenders. He's like, okay, who is he being defended by? Is it uh, Sam Hauser? Uh, is it one of the lesser-known defenders? On the t it was Jason Tatum. Walking past Jason Tatum, throwing lobs to Bam out of bio. I'm like, bro, again, this is Duncan Robinson we're talking about. He got paid as a shooter, undrafted shooter. Oh, everybody, I'm saying undrafted, but undrafted shooter. He is lethal from there, at least he had been. And, and right now, he's playing mini Tyler Hero. Now, I know in, the, in, in Duncan Robinson's prime two years ago, he was doing a lot of dribble handoffs and screening actions with Bam Adebayo. That was one of the reasons why he got paid so much money. He wasn't just strictly come off the screen and catch a shoe guy. But, like, to see him drive past Jason Tatum with ease, I'm looking at it like I, I don't even really got words for the Boston Celtics at this point. Because I'll be honest with you, if you go watch the last couple episodes of our podcast... I was pretty confident the Boston Celtics would win this series. I mean, I think they were a 560 favorite when it comes to the betting odds. And though, I didn't see the Boston Celtics as a team that really impressed me through the first two rounds. I just thought that the talent was going to overcome the heart. I, I guess that's what it was. Because there's no team in basketball that's playing with more heart than the Miami Heat. That's been the case for the last decade or so. Okay, I'm exaggerating. But you get what I'm saying. I just thought strictly based on the talent that they would be able to walk out of the series and go to the NBA Finals and try to win another one. And they haven't showed any fight in any of that talent. That, <laughs> that talent that I was praising, I'm not seeing it. This team that had been held as one of the deepest teams in basketball look as thin as possible. 
Again, I just read you a lineup that was Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, Max Struess, and so I'm just giving you random players in the Miami Heat, and it seems like those dudes are holding their own against Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And I know there's going to be a lot of finger pointing, as there should, because th there's no way you should be down 3-0 in any series, really, when you've got championship aspirations. There's going to be a lot of finger pointing. I've already seen it at Missoula. I've already seen it at the Jays. I've already seen it at, I've seen it at everybody, and everybody holds their own part. The Jays, the All NBA Jays, these these two dudes, they they combined for 26 points, one for 14 from three, one free throw between the two of them, one, and and that that is crazy. I didn't get to talk about game two, or, or did I get to talk about game one? I, how long was I? In, I was in Philadelphia. I don't remember how long I was there. All right, people on Twitter was putting game two on on. On Grant Williams, and yes, Grant Williams is talking trash to a dude that you don't want to tr talk trash to, but of course, the game of basketball is a lot different than just a one on one matchup that Jimmy Butler took personal. Can't even blame him no more because because the, today he he might have been he might have been best player on the team. <laughs> he might have been the best player on the team. When you got two All NBA players, you got a former defensive player of the year, you got another dude that made an All Defensive team, and Robert Williams, if he would have been healthy, he would have been in that conversation too. And, and nobody showed up to work today. I know Miami is crazy, and I'm going to Miami in a couple weeks, baby. I'm excited for it, but, like, were you down 0-2? The last place you want to be doing, the last thing you want to be doing is partying. And I'm not saying that they were, but I'm just, I'm just saying. Who was it? Was it Stephen A. Smith? Somebody went on national TV when the Knicks were losing their series to the Miami Heat and say, y'all underestimated how tough it is to play in Miami. He wasn't talking about the fan interaction or anything like that. He mean the, the city and what the city provides for you. And that was legitimately on TV, which is crazy. So, again, I, I want to apologize to Pat Riley. I want to apologize to Miami Heat because, yeah, I kind of phoned it in as this conference final is going to be won by the, the Boston Celtics. Even if you go look at our live, live podcast taping in Philly, we were filming our podcast in front of a bunch of different people. Shout out to you if you came out. I appreciate you. And in that, that I was like, hey, shout out to all of y'all for missing the playoff game to see us live. That's, that's, that's dope because if you're here, you love basketball. So you're skipping out on basketball to see us. And I said, don't worry. Because the last 18 times when a, when a higher seed has lost game one, they come back in game two and they win. The last 18 times. I said, thank y'all for coming to this. You're not even going to miss no good basketball because history says the Boston Celtics are going to get up and they're going to even out the series. And what happened? Jimmy, Jimmy Butler took over. Gabe Vincent hit a crazy shot and, and then the Jays can't score in the fourth quarter. That was, that was history. 18 in a row. It was broken. Eight seed being up 3-0. That's history. Now I'm thinking about it with both of these seeds being up 3-0. We might as well get our, our flights booked. We going to Denver. We going to Miami. And there's been a little discourse on Twitter. And I, I, I can never tell what's genuine on Twitter anymore. Maybe I'm getting old because I can never really tell. Talking about the ratings. Oh, the NBA's worst nightmare is to see the Denver Nuggets versus the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. The what? The ratings, the ratings, the ratings. Why, why are we talking about ratings? Me and you, the lay people. We don't get paid based on ratings. We know if the Miami Heat are the best team in basketball out east. And the Denver Nuggets are the best team in basketball out west. I, why do we care about the ratings of potential? Because if you're a diehard fan, it shouldn't matter to you. I do love an underdog story. And I'll be real with you, Miami Heat fans. In the first series, I picked against you, obviously. I thought the, the Milwaukee Bucks would win the championship. I will say this, this playoff run, I've been wrong way more than I've been right. And either way, um, the second round... Be honest with you, I picked against you. I thought that the, my, the the way the Knicks had handled the Cleveland Cavaliers, they was about to do this. Not the same thing as far as five games, but I just thought that they was going to take care of some business. Wrong. And, and then I picked against you again. So the Miami Heat single-handedly have not just busted my bracket, probably busted a lot of people's brackets, let's be honest. Again, I don't do this for right or wrong. Uh, I just do this for the love of the game. There's a lot that can be said about the Boston Celtics. I, I think I want to say majority of that until after... Um, everything is over because they got some tough decisions to make between Jalen Brown being eligible for a Supermax extension. Do you want to put $600 million or $500 million between Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum if this is the type of performances we get? Again, they do have a finals appearance and a ton of conference finals appearances, but that ain't the goal. You know what I'm saying? They already extended Joe Missoula, and I believe, I, I don't know if there's a single Boston Celtics fan out that is excited about Joe Missoula for the next three seasons. So yeah, all of those conversations will come once we cross that bridge. And maybe the craziest part about all of this, if you would have watched the first series and I would have told you the Miami Heat are going to be in the conference finals and they're going to be up 3-0 in the Boston Celtics, 
you would have probably assumed, oh, that means Jimmy Butler must be averaging 40 points per game for the entire playoffs. It's not the case right now. Now, of course, he could take over a quarter like he did in the fourth quarter of game two. Today, he ended with 16 points. He, he didn't need to be Jimmy Butler, the son of Michael Jordan. He just needed to be a great leader. He needed to taunt Al Horford. He needed to taunt Grant, Grant Williams. He just needed to play his own game. And sometimes his own game is not him dropping 40. You know, I it, it, again, it doesn't make a ton of sense. But here we are. This is why we watch sports in general. Yeah, we see it a lot of years where we knew the teams are going to make it to the finals and nobody put the Miami Heat as a finals contender. You might have had him at the end of last year, right? If At the end of last year, Jimmy Butler missed that shot on Al Warford, boom, you'd be thinking your hair, okay, they could be back. But if you watch those 82 games, and then you watch the first play-in game, and then you watch the first three and a half quarters of the second play-in game, there's no way you, you could have convinced yourself that Miami Heat were about to be in the NBA Finals. No way. The Bulls were six minutes away from eliminating this team in the play-in, and here they are a game away from the finals. This is like a 30-for-30 30 30 documentary waiting to be written and shot. You know what? I don't put it past Jimmy Butler. Maybe not 30-for-30, 30 30, but I, I know for sure he travels with photographers, and I'm hoping some videographers because this is a legendary run right now. Another Jimmy Butler legendary run after the bubble. And guess what? We ain't had the moment yet. Where Jimmy Butler's sitting on the stanchion and dead tired because, of course, he get, he's been given a lot of energy. But you'll have the game like this where he ain't got to play in the fourth quarter. Don't got to play. Gabe Vincent's put up a career high at 29 points. Um, Caleb Martin cannot miss. I, I don't remember what the percentages are, but he just he doesn't miss from the three anymore. And it's gotten to the point where you like, hey, this ain't this don't seem like a crazy hot streak. We I don't even know how many games in. 12 games in, 13 games went in for the playoffs for the Miami Heat, and he's still just shooting, and he's still just making shots. I don't remember if it was him or Gabe Vincent that got interviewed about how many open looks he got, and he said he felt disrespected. And I it, I don't know which one of them it was, but both of them are shooting crazy percentages. And that's that's even accounting for the fact that in the, the Nets, Knicks series, in the Knicks series, they shot like 29% from three as a team. But every of these other series, they are lights out. Today, they are 54% from three on 35 attempts. Again, some of that is garbage time because Duncan Robinson scored like 14 straight points for himself in the fourth quarter. But still, it's just showcasing how lethal they've been. One game away from the Miami Heat. I don't know if it's going to be a four, five, six, or seven. But history says the Heat have punched their ticket to the finals. History has said the Nuggets have punched their tickets to the NBA finals. We'll see if history continues to repeat itself. But right now... I don't know. I, I feel like we got to go to Miami or Denver.